Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode we will bring you our favourite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you, and we're here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more, you create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. I'm so excited because today I have Crystal Bega here with me and I cannot wait for you to, to meet her. I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, an introduction and then we'll, we'll dive into our conversation. So Christelle is a former corporate executive turned inspirational speaker, TV host and empowerment coach. Christelle left Africa to pursue her American dream. She barely spoke English and knew no one there. Her dream almost turned into a nightmare when an immigration officer tried to deport her because he said she was coming to work as a prostitute. She was put in detention for nine months before being released and she is a successful entrepreneur now that has been featured in numerous magazines and podcasts and her coaching empowers entrepreneurs to have the courage to put themselves out there and make a bigger impact wow huge welcome Christelle I'm so excited (laughs) that we're getting to have this conversation thank you so much for having me Louisa it's a pleasure to be here today with you Oh, thank you so much. I know our listeners are going to be really excited to hear all your wisdom. Um, and I know you've got so much to offer. Let, let's let's dive in because um, you've got an incredible journey that you've been on in the sense of many people won't have experienced it. Well, let, tell us a little bit about your journey because I know it um, really speaks to in terms of how you help people now in terms of helping them to have the the courage to do what they want to do in their lives. Yes, absolutely. And as you can hear from my accent, I'm originally from the US and in my bio is mentioned, I'm originally from Cameroon, that's in Africa. And six years ago, I decided to take the big leap, you know, move to a completely different country, barely speaking the language, knowing no one, over there and you know I just knew at that moment that it was time for me to do something different you know I people sometimes ask me that you know what made you move and I wish I could have a bigger reason than that but I just wanted more in life right I was doing I had a business over there I was doing a little bit of tv and radio but I knew that the message that I have was for the world and I knew where I was in my country, it was going to be hard for me to reach the world. So I decided Mm. to come to the only place where they say anything is possible. So I said, okay, I bought into that story. (laughs) You can be anything in the US. So I I said, okay, let's go there. And it was a, a big decision. That's why, as you mentioned, that journey helps me today help other, you know, entrepreneurs because it's really what is it about in life, making those kind of decisions that will define the rest of your life or the rest of your adventure as a business owner or an entrepreneur. Those scary moves that don't make sense sometimes, you know, it doesn't make sense. I have family in France, I have family in Canada, so it would make more sense for me to go where my family is. But, you know, I just knew this is where I was supposed to be. And sure enough, I landed here with my head full of dreams, all excited for this new adventure. And at the, from the airport, it started really being interesting because an immigration officer stopped me. And as we're talking, I, as I mentioned, I could even barely speak English. He told me, you know what? I think you came here to work as a prostitute. 
it didn't make a lot of sense to me because it was in December. Right. And one thing that I knew was that it's cold in December in the US, right? And interestingly enough, the reason why I chose California was because I knew at least in California, it doesn't snow because I didn't want to deal with it. So I came here just <laughs> like that. I Googled states where there is no snow. Yes, I, I'm that person. <laughs> so when he told I'm me that... You. <laughs> when he said it, it I thought I was dreaming it just didn't make sense it wasn't supposed to happen that way you know when you do something you think you have a plan and that's something that I love to help you know people with by letting them know sometimes mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs we feel like oh well, I, as, as soon as I have the, the great the, the right plan the right strategy I'm going to make it happen but guess, guess what? what sometimes things don't work as planned and then when that happens, what, what do you do? At that moment, you are called. Right. Exactly. So I didn't plan to be arrested at the airport. I didn't plan to be accused of being a prostitute. And fast forward, I was sent to a detention center until an immigration judge would decide if I really mm -hmm. could stay or you know, be deported. And during that time, I will pass the trauma part because it was really a traumatic experience. But during mm. that, those nine months, people often ask me, why did it take so long? Because I didn't have a lawyer. So every time I will go to court, they will, the judge will say, okay, you know, come back next month, go get a lawyer. And oh. until at some point they were tired to see me and they said, okay, fine, we're going to open your case. And that's when, you know, I was able to defend myself finally. But during those nine months, mm. I had the opportunity to go back, right? To my safety zone, to my family, to my friend. I didn't have to stay. You know, it was yeah. a decision that I had to make every day. Choose between going back to my comfort zone or mm. keep going mm. toward my vision, right? And it was, it's not always an easy decision. That's why I love to work with entrepreneurs because that's sometimes a challenging place to be as entrepreneurs. Sometimes things all don't work as you plan it and you have people around you telling you what are you even doing just go back to your job and what makes you keep going when sometimes mm -hmm. things don't mm -hmm. look like it will work one day i had no evidence that i would make it through i had no guarantee that I, and as a matter of fact the people that i met there because it's a center so you have other people there i met other women mm -hmm. there amazing women some of them were there for like two years already and it seemed insane to wow. me to just imagine how you can live there for two years but hey i ended up spending nine months there so who knows right but they were telling me you know what this place nobody lives from here with the legal status to stay in the u.s you either get deported or released on bail or maybe on parole if you know somebody who can stand for you but guess what i won my case Okay. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. those are the things that, you know, when I look back, I can really look mm -hmm. at somebody talking and maybe being desperate and wondering if there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I can confidently look at them and say, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. You know, yes. the people it telling is. you it's impossible are just sharing their experience. They have not seen it before, but yes. you can be the first one. Why not? I love that. So, that. That's so empowering. And, and to be able to be recommitting to yourself every day in a, in a circumstance like that, like you were saying, you've got all the evidence around you saying it's not possible because of people's experiences, their own mindsets and the trauma that they're experiencing as well. That is, I love what you're saying. It's that I am committed to doing it every day, having to recommit, recommit, recommit. Like you say, this is something that entrepreneurs are doing all the time um, as well within their, own, within their own businesses when they're perhaps seeing things not going the way that they want, like, like in alignment with the plan, like you were saying in, in your journey, your plan didn't include nine months in detention. That wasn't, wasn't of course, you know, <laughs> part of it. Um, but being able to adapt and to keep that vision like you were saying there, there was light at the end of the tunnel and wow what a feeling when you got that that pass to to leave mm. yes it was 
it was really an interesting, I think my life is divided into two. There is a before and after that okay. event. Yeah. There is really a before and after. And sometimes people tell me, wow, you're so courageous and I mm. can never do that. And I tell them, guess what? I didn't know either. Mm. <laughs> I yeah, promise right. you, if somebody would have told me when I got my visa, you know what? You will have to spend nine months. I would be like, get it, forget it. I'm not going, <laughs> you know? Right. Yes, that's the thing. We don't yeah. see our power. We don't know our power until we are called to use that power. Yes, quite. We don't know yeah. how, we don't give ourselves enough credit. Yeah. We don't see how powerful we are. We always think, you know what? Someone else can do it, but not me. Until we are placed in a situation by life to allow us to discover that, you know what? You are stronger than you think you are. You are more powerful than you think you are. Look at you now. Look at all the things that you were capable of doing. And you didn't even know you were able to do those things. Yeah. But those are the things that sometimes you discover through fire. It's not always fun. I, I wish I could tell you that I was strong during those nine months. I wasn't. Mm. I was crying. I think I've cried in that place more than I've ever cried in my whole entire life. Yeah. Right. And even when I left from there, it was still a traumatic experience. I didn't want to talk about it because there was a lot of shame. Mm. Even though I didn't do anything wrong, but some mm. way, somehow, I just felt like people would think I was in jail. So maybe I'm a bad person. So I was so ashamed because where I come from, being in jail is a big deal. Bad people go to jail. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't want to be associated with that type of people. So I didn't want anybody to know about it. Yeah. For two good years, I didn't even want any memory of that place of that time and a power through that try to ignore it and guess what the first job that i had at, after leaving from that place mm. was at lax the same airport where they all started no way no mm. way how does that feel then you know and listen i had shot that down memory so bad that i didn't even remember so i started working at the airport i didn't remember and it wasn't that long, that long ago. No. But I just, because it was so true, I shut down that memory. I started working there, nothing. I was just excited I had a job. And the only reason why I had that job because it was a French airline, because my English still wasn't there yet. Yeah. So they needed a French speaker, it was perfect. And I was able also to perfect my English. But I started working and one day, finally, they sent me to take care of an arrival flight. That's when the memory kicked back. Because as I went downstairs at the arrival level to help the passengers with their mm. bags, it hit me. Because I was seeing them carry, pick up, picking up their luggages and go out. And it hit me. You never left this airport as a regular passenger. Oh, I've got complete goosebumps as you're sharing. I, I had at that moment. Mm. And I was standing there with them, helping them and thinking, I need to do that. I need to exit the airport just to have the feeling. Yes. To just to know what it looks like, what it feels like. So when I finished helping them, I started following them to exit mm. the airport like a passenger. Because when you walk there, you don't need to use the same route. We mm. have, you know. So I was, I need to know what it feels like to exit the airport as a passenger. So I followed them. And then I saw the air, air exit people with signs, with flowers, <laughs> waving at their families, their friends, being excited <laughs> to see them. And I thought, I didn't have this. Nobody was excited to see me here. And at that moment, I had tears in my eyes as I was walking out. And it just was something happened in me. I went back to the office. Nobody knew what happened, but it was really something that made me realize that, you know, maybe sometimes you're not always welcome where you want to go. You don't feel welcomed, but it doesn't mean you don't belong there. Exactly, exactly. That treatment that wasn't right doesn't mean that you 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 don't you're not you know not not belonging where you are. I just think it's incredible, like you're saying, how um had you known the challenges that you were gonna face and the 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 trauma um that you were gonna experience at the beginning, you'd have gone no, but being able to have gone through that experience and to and to know and have that conviction that okay, I'm here over here doing what I love because I um, you said you were coaching in Cameroon, but you knew that no, I was doing TV, uh, TV. I had a company, so I you know I had a life, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
so you had a had a life um already in Cameroon but you knew that actually that it's like this I call it the soul calling of actually I know I'm meant to be over there whatever the hiccups traumas twists and turns along the way it, it's that path to success we imagine it's going to be like a straight line it never is is it whatever <laughs> everybody's got an individual uh, journey along the way of all the, the you know the 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 pitfalls the the hiccups and um you know ev- everything in everything in between um to get there but it is those experiences isn't it that you know just hearing you share your story I think is so helpful for people that are going through challenges perhaps questioning themselves as well because it's in those moments where things aren't going right where you are like you were saying earlier needing to recommit every day to find the courage every day to to keep going and for entrepreneurs if they're in that space of do I just go back and get a job um they don't want to you know it's that your soul still saying no come in this direction Uh keep keep going keep going um that I think it must just be um so so um inspiring for people that you know that you work with as because I know you help entrepreneurs with finding that courage within and being able to um I always think it's also being able to change what you know isn't working because that can take courage courage too um because otherwise we can go down that that rabbit hole of just staying the course when actually Mm. it's being able to use courage in so many different ways I mean of course you must see this with the clients that you're now working with as well is how you know um how they need to be courageous you know in in their businesses tell us a little bit about um your experiences you know what how you help clients with helping them to have the courage to have that conviction to stay true to their dreams like you did because of course now you're here because of all the courage that you had and being able to recommit to yourself every every day yes I, I, I want to first you know go back to something that you mentioned that I think was powerful mm-hmm. it takes courage to sometimes change course right? That requires you to own the the fact that maybe this is not the right way and it's okay, Mm. right? So courage, I like to say people usually when they hear courage, they think of something so big, so brave, like a firefighter jumping in a burning house, saving a baby. But courage really to me is the decision you make. Mm. You know, because before the action, before the firefighter jumps into the house, he makes a decision. I'm going there to save a baby. It's that decision that is the courage itself. Because making decision is not everybody's cup of tea. Some people just need everyone else to tell them what to do because they cannot decide on Mm. what to do. So really having the courage to check within yourself and wonder, What do I really want? And having the courage to go for it and deciding at that moment, if this is what I want, I'm going for it. And if you start, again, you don't have to have all the answers. You might think, okay, this is what's going to get me there. And if you you find out, okay, it's not getting me there. Again, it takes courage to check with yourself and say, you know what? This is just not working. Mm. right but sometimes it's so scary to own how we feel because we have not been taught how to deal with emotions and fear is such a big deal fear is the biggest thing that i help my clients with Mm. having the courage to face their emotions which is scary for a lot of people i have one telling me one day i don't know how to be emotional i just don't know what to do with it yeah, she yes. told me that. She said, I don't want to go there. I just yeah. power through everything. And I just, I said, no, you, your emotions are telling you something. And I know it's scary. That's even that journey of going back within and paying attention to the conversation happening within yourself takes courage. Mm. Because mm. usually what you're hearing within 
doesn't match what you're hearing outside. So having the courage to make the decision to listen to that voice within, not the voices outside, it's not an easy move. No, it's not. And I, I, you know, I love that you're talking about decision. We were talking about this in one of my programs yesterday around you can have an intention to to do something. It's very different to deciding to do something because that decision with decision comes commitment. Mm. And absolutely. Um, with um, so I think that's a really important piece that you were saying around actually when you've decided to do something, you're committed. Um, and then along with that, as you're going along that journey, of course, it's being able to start to recognize how you're feeling about that. So many people, and I know for myself as well, when I used to work in corporate, I used to work for social services, um, it was about six years ago now. I was very much living in my head because, of course, we're all operating at responding to the demands around us in that cor- corporate environment rather than being able to actually tune in and think about how we're feeling mm-hmm. and being able to allow those emotions, like you were saying, to allow yourself to, to feel them so that they can move through you, that, so they don't stay with you because mm-hmm. the body will um, hold on to them otherwise, won't it? Which is not what we want because then that just creates stress, stress in the, uh, in, in the body. I love what you're saying around being able to have that decision to, to, to say yes to yourself effectively, isn't it? And to being able to have that courage to say, actually, I'm going to change this. I know for me, when I left social services, it, it felt I, that's where I felt like I was my most courageous because I left behind everything that I knew to then leap into the entrepreneurial world um, and had my own version of challenges along the way of being in that space of actually I'm going to recommit to myself every day that this is the journey that we're going in because it's about choosing choosing your dream isn't it and committing to committing to your to your dream was there a moment along your journey where you had that whether it was a turning point or you you made that decision that no matter what that this is this is the I'm choosing my dream. This is the direction that I'm going in. Yes. Interestingly enough, my job at the airport in less than a year, I became a manager, which never happened before in the company. So when I decided to quit, to go full-time in my business, again, it seemed like out of this world. Like, what are you thinking? Seriously. You are a foreigner in a country, you have no family. So it wasn't a story of, okay, I'm going to do that entrepreneurship thing. If it doesn't work out, I'm going (laughs) to go back to my mom's basement. No, I didn't have that option. Okay. It was really, you know, you make it or you don't. It was not, well, if I'm not able to pay for my bills, my sister, no, I didn't have that option. So when again, that fire within me started reminding me that yes it's great you needed a job to get started somewhere you know you're in a foreign country but it's not why you're here for this is not what you're here for you know there is something more you know there is something more when I made the decision to listen to that voice it was a scary decision again Mm. because at that moment your head jumps in and like what are you doing (laughs) are you are you out of your mind because it's not like I had money coming in. No, I was just taking programs, trying to figure it out. I wasn't making any money. So it made zero sense for me to say, you know what? I'm quitting to go full, full time to what? You don't even have a business. You're not making any money. So I remember when I told my colleagues, you know, I, I'm going to leave there. They said, what are you talking about? No, that, what are you saying? You see, you have a great future in less than a year. You already manage it. You, it looks mm-hmm. bright. I say, yeah. And I'm so grateful for this company because I wasn't miserable in my job. Again, that wasn't my story. I know a lot of people quit mm-hmm. for that, but that wasn't my story. I had a great, you know, great team, great management that trusted me, loved me, promising me great things. So I was comfortable. And some way, somehow, I just knew it wasn't enough. And again, you can stay in your head during those moments and, on, and make, it make, make it work and think, mm. you know what, this is fine. 
or you step into your heart when your heart is whispering, you know there is more. That whisper takes courage to follow because it goes against the rational thinking of your brain that is there to keep you safe. So what do you do? Again, you are called to make a decision. Mm. You follow the safety movements, the safety steps that your brain is giving you because your brain is there to keep you safe. Or you follow, you trust the whisper in your heart that is require you, requiring you to have faith because it doesn't give you evidence. When your brain is talking to you, it's giving you all the evidence, all the yes. facts. That's why it makes sense. But your heart doesn't convince you, just whispers. And mm. it requires faith because you have no evidence. It doesn't even make sense because it's not convincing you. So you can't even explain that clearly to someone else. No, that's so true. <laughs> so true. I love what you say about the heart whispering. That really um, speaks to me because it's a it's a softer voice, um, isn't it? Then the, the head, the head can be quite noisy. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we have to really pay attention to what our heart is saying. But I've always found and I see this around, you know, with, with my colleagues and clients is when we follow our heart and we follow that whisper. We have to have the courage to be able to take those steps, even if they're baby steps, because we can't we can't necessarily see the whole path laid out, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and even if we think we can, like you were saying about the, having the plan, here's my pathway, <laughs> the, the, the pathway might take you off on a little a little detour. And, I, and I'm so glad we can see all the path because if I saw it, I'm not sure I'll be here today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we can see all the things. Yes, quite, quite. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm with you on that because we would have been like, no, I'm not going no to have that going experience. <laughs> Thanks, heart. But, mm -mm. <laughs> but um, it is being able to have that faith, isn't it? And, and taking, taking those steps and, um, and having that commitment to continuing to go down and follow that that whisper of there is more to life because there is there always is you know every time we step into that highest level of ourselves that next expansion of ourselves then there's always more that's the beautiful thing it's like we can continue to grow and to you know particularly as entrepreneurs making an impact with with the services that we we, we offer and I, I you know I believe that we're, we're never truly uh, complete in terms of being able to to grow and become better versions of ourselves. Mm. If that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. And it's really, I think our whole experience is requiring us to have courage because it's scary. Mm -hmm. it Those moves are scary. It's not something, you know, your heart whispers something crazy to you and you're like, okay, let's do it. No, it's scary yeah. because it doesn't make sense because everybody around you will be wondering, what are you even saying? Yes. Because people yes. ask me that. I had to hide to my family back home, my sister in Canada, who I speak to every, almost every day. I didn't tell her I was quitting because I just didn't have the strength to fight that battle when mm. I was trying to figure out my business because I knew they would want to do an inter Like, what are you doing? What are you saying? Are you out of your mind? Wait, what? Because the people that I'm there to mention it to were pulling out their head, like, what are you saying? So I had to face that fear because it was scary even to me. Mm. I remember sitting one day in my previous apartment and thinking about the whole situation and crying, like wondering, Krista, what is wrong with you? Why do you always want more? You should be grateful for what you have. You just moved to this country and now you have this great job. People that even moved here before, before you envy you. Your family is proud of you. What do you want? What is wrong with you? Why can't you just be content with this? And as I was crying, I knew, I just knew when it's something that is bigger than you, you just feel it. So as I was crying, I just told, said to myself, you know what? I just have to do it. Mm. I just have to quit and go do it. I know it, I don't know how, I don't, it doesn't make sense, but I just know I have to do it. That's what I told myself at that moment. And I just wiped my tears and say, you know what? We are doing this. Yeah. And I, you know, when I went to my, you know, supervisor and I told him, hey, this is what I'm doing. He said, why are you kidding? So I explained, you know, I want to, 
He said, you're a manager. You can make up your hours. I don't care what you're saying. You're not quitting. End of the conversation. <laughs> End of the conversation. So my brain was like, okay, good. You tried. Okay. It's not like you didn't follow your heart. Okay. But he said, no, what are you going? So I tried to convince myself that, okay, at least, you know, I tried. Okay. It's not like I didn't, but things started going you know, sour in the, at the workplace. And I started noticing that things were becoming rocky. And I said, okay, I'm the one creating this mess mm-hmm. right now because I shouldn't be here anymore. Yeah. I just knew that, okay, my energy, sh- I shouldn't be here anymore. I'm being stubborn. That's why all <laughs> this is happening. So I'm going to be of service to everyone else because sometimes the world leads us to believe that when we choose ourselves, we are being selfish. Mm. But the truth is choosing you is the biggest gift you can give to the world. Yes. It really so is. I thought, okay, the team needs me. The company loves me. I'm doing it for them. And, and, and then they deserve it because it was so good to me. So I'm doing something good for the group. Mm. But was I? I started noticing things. They didn't know. They didn't understand why we started having some issues that we never had before in in the company. But I knew what was going on because I'm aware. So I was noticing those things and I knew this never happened before. Why is it happening? Because I shouldn't be here anymore. Yeah. So now I'm thinking I'm serving. I'm doing something for them. But am I? I'm not. Mm -mm. I'm not serving me. I'm not serving them. It might look for them. They're happy to see me, but I know deep down that I'm not helping by staying here. So again, I had to take a deep breath and have the courage to send that email to HR and say, I'm leaving. Okay. So again, she tried to keep me. So, okay, you know what? Take three months, leave of absence, go figure out the business. I support you and come back in January, 2020. So I said, okay. I'd take that offer, but mm-hmm. I knew I'm not coming back. But again, my brain, I wanted my brain to quiet down. And I said, you know what? Let's try. Okay. Yeah. If it doesn't work, at least we have a way out. You can come back. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, by that time I work as hard as I could three months, no client, zero money coming in. So January, 2020, I have to make a decision. Go back or keep trying. I send that email, tears in my eyes saying, Christelle, you're crazy. You have rent to pay. You have bills to pay. And here you are letting go of the only source of income that you have. You're out of your mind. But guess what? We're going to do it. So I send that email and that was it. And sure enough, that same week, I had my first client as a coach. Oh, I love that. I love that. So it's just those things. Mm. It feels like for me, again, it's my journey. It feels like I'm called consistently to have faith by br- burning all my bridges, jumping into the unknown and just trusting that some mm. way, somehow the universe has my back. Yeah. It's no co- coincidence to me that the moment that you burnt the bridges, you made that decision that you were all in. You hadn't kind of left. I call it leaving the back door open. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. I just might retreat over here if I need to is that that's when the first client came in. It was like your en- energy was all, right, I'm, I'm all in. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, we're, we're doing this universe. And, and uh, I love it. It's like the validation the universe has gone, here we go. Here's your first amazing client that you get uh-huh. to work with and to do your magic with. Um, what, a, what, a, what a gift. That's so exciting. And gosh, and then I'm just thinking 2020. Then, then of course, we hit the whole exactly how <laughs> how interesting and then the whole airport shut down i'm like okay who is crazy now <laughs> that is yeah you, yep. I mean, you couldn't make that up when you look back when you when you say that i was like hang on a second i can just see what's about yes. to come with what you've said and that's the year the like wow that's the year as as you know as i was sounding crazy to leave i seemed making zero sense everything shut down now what now the safety of that job wasn't that safe was it right so that's really a journey that i helped my clients with facing Mm. those fears you know because when you know where you are going when you know what your calling is doesn't make it less scary it just doesn't and it's easy to bend and let the fear lead 
that conversation. So what I really help people do is be able to have conversations with those fears. Because I love to explain fear this way. When you want to do something, you say, okay, I want to do this thing. And your brain jumps in to try to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Start giving you all these reasons why you shouldn't even think about doing that thing. Okay. It starts giving you all the anxiety style. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if people make fun of me? What if I fail? What if I lose all my money? What if it doesn't work? What if, what if my family, what if my friends, what if my partner, <gasps> When that conversation is going on in your head, as you mentioned, it can be really loud and not everybody mm. knows what to do with that. I invite my clients to stop and listen. I know usually they tell you, shut it down, don't listen, don't. Mm. You are just suppressing your emotions and that fear. And you can't suppress it for too long. You suppress it for a minute, it's coming back the next minute. So Louder. the best way is really to face it. Mm. So how do you face it? You want to pay attention. Again, it takes you, it calls you to be connected with yourself every all the time. Always pay attention to how you feel at any given moment. When you feel the anxiety, you know, coming up when you want to do something, you start freaking out. For example, you want, you feel like, okay, maybe to promote my business, I can start going live on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm so bad on camera. What are people going to say? Oh my gosh, I will, start, I will forget everything I have to say. What are people going to think? <laughs> They're not going to take me seriously. That conversation, you know, whatever, you know that conversation. <laughs> people be like, is Crystal in my head? <laughs> <laughs> so when that conversation starts, I don't want you to take a deep breath and power through it. I want you to sit and listen. I, I call that having a conversation with your fear. No. Sit and listen. It does the, these two things. First of all, it lets the energy out, which makes it weaker. It's really like you're having an argument with somebody. Mm. If you're arguing with somebody, if you answer back and they have an argument, they say something, you say something back, it just escalates. Mm. So if you have that voice is screaming all those things and you're fighting by saying, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make these affirmations. I'm going to shut you down. It's just making it stronger because it's going to push back. There is a resistance that you're creating. Mm. But imagine if you're having an argument with somebody and you stop talking and listen, what happens? Even if that person is angry, like never before, they will run out of argument because you are not giving, the, they are not feeding their anger. They are not, you are not feeding it by saying something back, by trying mm -hmm. to shut them off. You just quiet. Mm. They will talk for a minute or two and then they will not have anything to fight on and they will start slowing down. Yeah. And at some point they will keep quiet. And imagine if you tell them, I hear you. Mm. what you say actually makes sense what happens now that person doesn't feel take you as their enemy anymore now it feels as if you guys are on the same side because they feel understood so just practice doing that with your that voice that fear and say what you're saying makes sense because guess what i hear people say fear is a liar but is it when fear is telling you what if you fail it's a possibility right mm. so it's not a lie it's a possibility you can fail Were you going to lose all your money? Is it a possibility? Yep. You can invest your money in something and don't get what mm -hmm. you wanted. So it's a possibility. Oh my gosh, what if people make fun of you? Can people make fun of you? Yes. So it's again a possibility. What if you lose your friends? Can you lose your friends? Have other people lost their friends? Yes. So it's another possibility. So you want to acknowledge that that voice actually makes sense. And let them know, like, let the voice, like, yeah. you right. Everything that you're saying, actually, I hear you. It makes sense. It's possible. It's so good. So good. Because it, you can, as you're speaking, I can, I'm sure the listeners will be feeling as well. You can feel the soothing of that. It just melts the fear away of the acknowledgement of, yes, that could happen. Exactly. Um, and it soothes the nervous system. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's the goal. Now your brain doesn't feel the need to fight mm -hmm. and convince you. Now it's more 
peaceful. It's in a better place to get a new direction. Yeah. Now you're in a better place to redirect that energy. Mm. Because now it feels as if you're on the same side. You're not fighting each other. You are together in this. So now you want to just suggest, ask your brain, for example, that's a possibility, everything that you just mentioned. But what if we just give it a try? Imagine if we go live on that Facebook, just take that example, yeah. and one person you know, feels better after watching us. How cool would that be? And you can notice how your energy will shift because now your brain is excited by that new possibility. Because our brain is like a computer. You give mm -hmm. it the command. Now it's coming up with all these images, scenarios, and oh my gosh, that will actually be fun. It's a new possibility, right? Yeah. Now you're in a better place to go take action. And to follow the heart, the little whisper. So you're listening to the exactly. heart and the brain. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. That's so powerful, such a powerful um, way to be able to soothe yourself and to step through that fear mm. um, to be able to have that courage to, to take action. I know you've got a, a really amazing uh, freebie, a gift for our, our listeners. Would you like to tell everyone ab um, about that and then also how that people can stay connected with you? Because I could talk to you all day about this. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> love it. And I know our listeners will want to, to stay connected with you. So yeah, tell us a, a little bit about your very generous freebie. Yes, I have a 30 minutes session, a complimentary session that I love to call Courage Boost Session. And during that session, you know, wherever you are on your journey, we discuss about it and I can help you identify what is really stopping you, what is your biggest fear at the moment, and give you a little, you know, process on how to move through it in order for you to show up because that's what you have to do to make a difference, to make an impact. You have to show up. And sometimes the bigger the stage, the bigger the fear. And when I say stage, it's not only public speaking, right? It can be just for you, can be the biggest stage going live on Facebook, right? Mm. So whatever that fear of putting yourself out and sharing your gift with the world is, we can talk about it and, you know, move through that. I just hope that at the end of that 30 minutes, you'll be in a different place. That always happens. So I, promise say, you. I know that will happen. That always <laughs> happens. But, you know, come check it out. So that's my gift for your audience. And I'm really excited to connect with each one of them. And to say connect, stay connected. They can find me anyone social media, Crystal Biga, C-H-R-I-S-T-E-L-L-E. Biga is B-I-I-G-A. Anyone social media, feel free, please. And please do that. Hit me up on DM facebook or ig say hi and let me know you know what's your biggest takeaway from this podcast i would love that oh amazing thank you so much and thank you very much for that generous gift as well i encourage everybody to 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 take you up on take you up on that your diary is going to be full <laughs> 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 thank you so much for sharing your time with us and all your wisdom with us today it's been a complete honor to have you on the show and uh, thank you Thank you to all our listeners. Thank you for joining us today. Looking forward to connecting with you again very, very soon and sending you all lots and lots of love and gratitude for, for being here and joining in with our conversation. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.